This is your tech news briefing for Wednesday, January 4th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal, filling in for Zoe Thomas. The war in Ukraine is approaching month 11, and Kyiv's forces fighting the Russian military have managed to accomplish something the Pentagon hasn't, going digital, networking their fighters, intelligence, and weapons faster and far more cheaply than the decades and billions of dollars spent by the U.S., To be fair, the Defense Department aims for a scale, security, and bandwidth that far exceeds Ukraine's ambitions. But are there lessons the U.S. and the West more broadly can learn from Ukraine's ability to cobble together a virtual command and control system on the fly? With me now to discuss that is WSJ Brussels Bureau Chief Dan Michaels. Dan, thank you for coming on the show. Good to be with you. So, Dan, you've been keeping tabs on the war in Ukraine and found that the military there has essentially digitized its fighting force on a shoestring. Can you tell us what that actually looks like on the ground? What kind of things are they doing? For Ukrainian soldiers out in the field on the front line and behind the front lines, as has been widely reported, they're a pretty scrappy force. There wasn't much of a Ukrainian military in a big way before Russia invaded almost a year ago. A lot of the equipment is donated from countries in the West. But what the Ukrainian troops have that is really unusual is the ability to communicate with each other and to get intelligence and targeting information in real time in a way that other armies, underdog armies, haven't had. They also have new technologies like drones. Drones have been widely used by the U.S., by Russia, by others. But what the Ukrainians have done is taken drones, which for the U.S., for example, have been very big and expensive, almost like airplanes, and just taken cheap hobby drones and turned them into tools of war, too. You mentioned that the Ukrainian army is able to communicate with each other in ways that other underdog armies haven't. How are they doing this? Combination of things. One of the most important things is they're able to communicate using satellites, and that's, uh, for the most part, Starlink, which is uh, Elon Musk, uh, SpaceX's satellite communications operation. They've donated some equipment. The U.S. government has paid for some. A lot of Ukrainian soldiers have bought their own Starlink units. And so they're not reliant on cell phones. They have ability to communicate even when everything around them is destroyed. And over Starlink, they're using some apps that are pretty familiar to people like Signal, encrypted communications apps. They're also using apps that the Ukrainians themselves have developed for things like targeting and for the headquarters, the bases, command and control centers to send information, for example, targeting information to the troops at the front. Troops using uh, these HIMARS mobile rocket launchers that have gotten a lot of attention, they will get targeting information essentially over a tablet or a cell phone, um, and that's being fed to them digitally from a headquarters. It might be very far away, but it's incredibly precise. So Ukraine has a large tech sector. We've covered that on the show before. So from the tech side of things, that all makes sense. But was there anything else in Ukraine that helped them establish this digital guerrilla type warfare so quickly? It was a combination of capability and just pure need. As several people said to us, when your country is invaded and it's almost existential, what you get is not just military types and not just military technology people, but everybody pitching in, everybody bringing something, which may not be technology itself, but maybe a different way of thinking about a problem. Several people said to me that what's different about the military technology efforts in Ukraine versus what, say, the U.S. or, for example, the U.K. are doing is that you're really getting the just some of the smartest people in society applying their brain power to the problems. And it's just a very different dynamic from, say, in the West, in a peaceful society where those people probably aren't going to be focused on military technology. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more. How does this compare to other militaries in the West, like the U.S.? The biggest difference from militaries in the West is the scope and the ambition of what's going on here. What the Ukrainians are doing is is emergency to react very quickly. 
what the U.S. and some of its allies have been doing has been going on for years. It's incredibly ambitious and much more comprehensive than what the Ukrainians are doing. So what the Ukrainians are doing in some ways has even been enabled by things that the U.S. has done in the past. Let's not forget that the Internet was begun as a U.S. military project. Um, GPS was put in space by the Pentagon and drones were really supercharged by the U.S. military. So what the Ukrainians are doing is cherry picking the cheapest, easiest to get off the shelf bits of this and improvising an approximation of what the U.S. is doing, but by no means trying to copy the whole thing. The Pentagon is under enormous pressure to make sure that everything is foolproof and works perfectly. The Ukrainians are doing this all by the seat of their pants, on the fly, just trying to gain a little bit of an edge on the Russians. And given the, the horrific situation for the Ukrainians, there's a lot more willingness to experiment. And I've got to imagine that if things don't go perfectly, people are a little bit more forgiving than they might be if some hugely expensive Pentagon system doesn't work as it's expected to. So are there any lessons that the West or the U.S. can learn from Ukraine's tactics? The most significant lesson repeated to us by several people was the need and the willingness to experiment and innovate. A few people we talked to who have experience on both sides with the U.S., the U.K., but also with the Ukrainians say what's really impressive about what the Ukrainians are doing is just their willingness to try things. So the biggest gift for the West in terms of thinking about military technology that is coming from the really terrible fighting in Ukraine is this laboratory that is really being powered by the need to move fast. All right. WSJ Brussels Bureau Chief Dan Michaels, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.